It's day 15 of this food challenge and we're going to be having leftover soup for breakfast. I have a lot of our teas lined up down here. I wanted to go over just a little bit of these teas that we use and how we are steeping them. So most of these teas were something we harvested from our garden or something we were harvested in the wild. And we just kind of use them based upon how we feel. So some of them are better for stomach pain, some of them are better for relaxing or waking you up, some of them are better for going to sleep. It's a really simple process of steeping them. We only let most of them steep for a couple minutes and you can let some of them steep longer if you want you know, more potency, but that's not advised for one that I have here, which is Labrador tea. This is just one tea that you don't wanna let steep for really long periods. Other ones, it's okay to even steep them for an hour if you want. One of our favorite ways to make the tea is to use a French press. So this is a little mini guy we have for this. We have another one for coffee. We have used the little tea balls in the past, but they would open up sometimes, and we've just found this is better for putting in a good amount and steeping. Some of the other teas we have here are yarrow, fireweed, and we have different flowers and plants from the garden right here and I have more of a lemon and mint collection on the end. And I keep those together because those are more like alert ones for me. We find that those help us just wake up in the morning. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna make some mint and then we'll probably even put in some lemon balm and lemongrass. And with these herbs, it's kind of important to remember that you actually don't need very much. That's the lemongrass, got lemon balm, and we're gonna add mint. The great thing about tea like this is that a little bit will go a long way. You'll find that that small amount will make you two glasses of tea, so it's gonna make some for Eric and I. We're gonna get water in here. One other thing I wanted to mention was our chaga. We have chaga in birch polypore. In fact, chaga comes off of birch too. And there's a lot of craze about chaga and it really is a good drink. When we process it, we like to break it up into little chunks and let it dry out. And then we steep these for a very long time, generally an hour to several hours. And they are reusable until the liquid stops coming out dark. And I'll show you what I mean by that. This is a pot that we have had brewing for a while and there's a few chunks in there. And the liquid's really dark still. So this can last several weeks just depending on how much chaga you make. And that tastes like a cinnamon, you know, natural flavor drink. I don't know quite how to describe it, but we really enjoy it. And it does stain your teeth a lot, unfortunately. We're gonna go ahead and eat breakfast now. For lunch, we needed something quick because we're working on a project today. So we got some of our smoked salmon and we also have some of our canned coleslaw to go with that. So for dinner, we started a project in the cabin today and it's taken us a lot longer than what we thought. We got kind of sidetracked, so it's pretty late. We're not really making a dinner tonight per se, but we are having some of our kind of canned pickled veggies. And then I think we're also gonna open up some applesauce with a little bit of jelly and then we are going to hit the sack. We're starting breakfast and we have our Dutch oven with some lard in there. We've got a couple leeks, some carrots, potato, we've got canned green beans, canned greens, tomato sauce, chicken stock, and herbs. We're going to be using coriander and rosemary. We're finally done with our big project and we are going to have some applesauce as a snack and then we're going to be eating the rest of our leftover soup for dinner. And before bedtime we are going to have some tea. This is a little bit of fireweed and then I'm going to add chamomile and marigold leaves and a little bit of clary sage. For breakfast, we're using potatoes and carrots, and we are going to make a hash brown. So we're cooking our hash browns, and we also added some bell pepper, some leeks, and some parsley in there. 
We are ready to eat breakfast. We added a fried egg to the top of the hash browns, some green salsa, and a little bit of sauerkraut. So since we had such a late breakfast today, I think we ate breakfast at like noon, we're kind of having an early dinner, and I'm making a dish I've never made before, and I don't even know what to call it, but I'm gonna start with cooking down a can of tomato sauce and this half a can of our green salsa. And then to this pan, I'm gonna start with frying some potatoes. Our potatoes are done frying and I also added some carrots in there. And I've got one red onion over here. I'm gonna take half of it and I'm gonna cook it down for just a couple minutes. And this salsa and tomato sauce has cooked down a lot and it's a lot thicker now. And what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna actually crack two eggs in there and almost like poach them inside this tomato sauce. And then that's gonna go on top of our fried potatoes and carrots. Got some of our pickled veggies on top. These are carrots, and these look like serrano peppers in this one. And then we've got some raw red onion. We're gonna be making some tea before we go to bed. This is Labrador leaves. And I'm gonna be adding a few little sprigs of yarrow. And some thyme. For breakfast, I chopped up some stuff last night. We have carrots, red onion, cowboy candy, and some beets. And then I'm gonna be adding some peppertini liquid and some of the peppers. I'm gonna be adding some relish, some of the liquid, and some red salmon. And this is a little garden antipasta that we made. It's beets, we have eggplant, green beans, and it's olive oil and vinegar, and that's why it's all clumped up right now, but it adds a really nice sauce to this salad we make. I almost forgot, we're gonna put some mustard on. For lunch today, we're gonna have some applesauce with some of our jelly on it, and we're gonna do fireweed jelly, and we're also gonna do blueberry and crowberry jelly. We're getting started on making dinner, which is going to be roasted veggies. I've got some pink beets and a white one, a few different carrots, a whole bunch of potatoes, and some parsnips. I'm going to be peeling these and cutting them up, and we're going to roast all this together with some herbs and lard. We like to leave the skin on a lot of these ingredients if we can. I just took it off the parsnips because they had a lot of dirt on them. And I forgot to say that I am going to be adding two small onions. And our tea for tonight is chamomile and lemon balm. For day 19 breakfast, I have some leeks and onions cooking in some lard, and then I'm gonna be adding in a French fingerling potato. It's actually just one potato, a really big one, and then some carrots. And we're gonna be immersion blending this later and adding some other ingredients and making a fish chowder. While breakfast is cooking on the wood stove, we're going to be making some tea, we're going to do some fireweed, some nasturtium, and some bee balm. I added coriander, parsley, and tarragon, and then I'm just adding in some greens, and some pink salmon, and then we're gonna get this back on the heat for a little bit. We're gonna be eating a late lunch and an early dinner at the same time. We have purple potatoes that were baked in lard, and then we're adding some salsa on top that we made, or 
our version of salsa. It's carrots, red onions, and then I've got some pepperoncinis and a beet in there, I believe. And I'm going to be topping that with some cowboy candy and a little bit of relish. And of course, our real green salsa. And we're going to have some leftover soup as well. And I will be adding some sauerkraut onto both of those. We're going to be having tea before we go to bed. It's lemongrass, birch, polypore, mint, and I have some rosemary in there. Day 20 for breakfast. We have some of our leftover soup in there in the bottom from last night. And then the other night we had some root veggies that we roasted in the oven. We got some of those in there. A little bit of sauerkraut, a little bit of our cowboy candy. For lunch today we're having a beet and carrot coleslaw and there's also some red onion in there. And for a dressing I did a little bit of our mustard and some juice from a can of pepperoncinis. Over here we have our salmon patties and these are smoked salmon, leeks, we added an egg and some parsley and I think we actually put a little pesto in these too and these are topped with a little bit of mustard. For dinner we're starting off with some tea. This is birch polypore, fireweed and clary sage. And we've got a bunch of steamed veggies. We have a beet, potatoes, carrots, some leeks topped with some relish, sauerkraut, and salsa. We've got some of our canned salmon with some mustard, some pepperoncinis, and a dill pickle. It's breakfast on day 21 of the food challenge. We are making fried smashed potatoes. Arrow went ahead and steamed these this morning and I'm just smashing them down with a spatula into little pancakes almost. And then I'm going to fry them in a skillet with some lard. Here's our breakfast, fried smashed potatoes. Put some mustard on this one, salsa, and some pepperoncinis. For lunch today we have some of our spaghetti squash, on top of that we had a little bit of our relish and some sauerkraut, and then we had some tomato sauce that we also cooked down with some of our salsa, and on top of that we have some carrots, bell pepper, and red onion. Today we're making something a little bit different, and it's going to be kind of a spaghetti squash pizza, except it's going to have no bread, no cheese, and no meat. So I'm starting with just this layer of spaghetti squash that I mixed an egg in and I'm going to try to fry it up on both sides and then we're going to add our toppings and get it in the oven. Time to top our pizza and get it in the oven and we're going to do pesto sauce today. We have a little bit of sauerkraut, some red onion, a few pepperoncinis, and these are some of our sweet honey pickled kohlrabi and daikon radish. And this is going to go in the oven at 400 for about 10 minutes. So there it is, our spaghetti squash pizza is finally done. For dessert, we're gonna have applesauce with crowberry and blueberry jelly. And then we're also making tea. I have some bee balm and borage, catnip and nasturtium. For breakfast on day 22 of the food challenge, we are having our salmon hash. We have a purple potato, carrot, a shallot, some of our smoked salmon, and two eggs. For lunch we were having fish and chips. We've got a purple potato we made our fries out of in the oven. Some of our mustard. These are pickled radishes and kohlrabi. And we've got some smoked sockeye salmon with a little bit of salsa on it. For dinner we're making a really delicious soup. I've got a bunch of leeks in there cooking in some lard and those are just about done. So I'm going to add some potato. And this is just one really big potato we had. Also adding one of our really big carrots. And this is bone broth. And this is one can of pasta sauce. 
Our soup's done. We added some greens and coriander and rosemary. Sauerkraut. And pepperoncinis. It's day 23 and we got lucky. We got three eggs this morning before they froze. But we're going to save these for lunch or for dinner. Have something different for breakfast. We're having leftover soup and lemon balm, lemongrass, and thyme tea for breakfast. So last time we made these smashed fried potatoes, we enjoyed them a lot. So that's what we're having for lunch again today. For dinner, we're going to be making salmon meatballs. I'm gonna start with some leeks. I'm gonna be adding in one can of our pink salmon, some of our pesto, and some chopped greens. After I go ahead and mix all of this, I'm gonna add one egg. It is day 23 of the food challenge and it's dinner time. We're eating our salmon and pesto meatballs and we went ahead and steamed up some parsnip and some carrot. We also have tea that is fireweed, yarrow, birch polypore, and I believe I have some mint in there. And fireweed and yarrow are my personal two favorites for the teas this year. They are awesome. Fireweed has a real floral scent and yarrow is more like a laundry room, which sounds weird, but it's actually absolutely fantastic. This is gonna be the end of part three of our food challenge. We still have one more part to go, but before we end this video, we wanted to answer some of our most popular questions we've been getting since we've been on this food challenge. First question we get a lot is about our salt intake. Um, we still eat a lot of salt. We have a lot of salt in the foods that we've prepared, our salmon, a lot of our veggies, pickled food, sauerkraut. So we're definitely getting enough salt. So there's definitely no concerns with the salt. Another question we're getting a lot is, are we sick of salmon? And the answer to that is definitely no, this salmon is delicious. It's smoked Alaskan salmon, so it doesn't get any better than this, so we're going to still keep eating it. I agree, it doesn't get old at all. And a lot of you folks are concerned about our health and are asking us about weight. Have you experienced body changes, weight loss, things like that? Uh, I'd say probably yes. I know for me, I weighed a lot more when we first moved here, and I think I probably dropped about five pounds during this food challenge. Yeah, so I don't think I've really lost much weight, but we have as a whole lost a lot of weight since we moved to Alaska just because we've really had a major diet change in general. And I'm going to say this for myself, I haven't personally noticed that much in the way I feel. I, you know, we're used to eating plant-based foods, so I feel like it's just good food and it's a little harder to work with what we've got going on, but I, I feel great. Yeah, I also feel great. I don't feel any difference from when we were eating meat and um, store-bought things from before. Um, it is getting better. I'm not as hungry after meals, so I think we're getting a little more used to just eating these types of foods. What about coffee? Are you missing coffee still? Coffee, yeah, I'm definitely missing coffee, and I have no plans on quitting drinking coffee. As soon as I get off this challenge, I'm definitely going to be drinking coffee again. And another question we get is, how are we dealing with the challenge, and is it is the challenge hard? Yes, the challenge is hard, and it's especially hard because we're not just sitting around doing a food challenge. We're still doing our everyday life, making videos, you know, working on our property, doing projects. So it's extremely hard and I'm looking forward to the end. Yeah, I can say that too. It's been a rough month. We're just going to say that. A lot of things have gone unexpected and this has been a complete, uh, I mean, we love it, but it's just been a little bit of a like burden if you want the, the real answer. And it's, you know, it is tempting to just grab something because it's off the shelf and we want it, but we're trying to stay strong for it. And again, that was the whole reason why we started this challenge was because we wanted to eat more of our foods that we had. You know, we went through growing it and canning it, so we really felt the need to push to eat more of it. We made a great dent in some of the stuff that we had a lot of greens. Um, salmon and carrots. We weren't even eating that many of our carrots going into the fall, which was silly. But proceeding forward, we're definitely going to make some changes in the garden this next year with what we want to grow more of and what we want to grow less of. Obviously staples are important to us. I would maybe have less salmon. 
We seem to have a lot of salmon this time around, hopefully a moose next year. We know we definitely want to grow more tomatoes, peppers, all of that kind of stuff, probably the same amount of potatoes. One thing that didn't do that well for us this year was winter squashes. So next year, I really want to focus on that because winter squashes are main staple for us in the winter. So not having them really is less food for us going into winter. So with that being said, this challenge was good to understand what we want to grow more of and what we maybe want to grow less of and anticipating any sort of crop failures or anything like that. And the last question we get a lot is what is cowboy candy? Cowboy candy is basically a sugar syrup, like a thick syrup with jalapenos. So it's a candy jalapenos. We used jalapenos in Serrano's in ours. And that is something that we actually only have one can left of. So jalapenos and um, serranos, we're going to grow a little more of those next year. We appreciate you guys following along. And we have one more installment of this. And then we will be showing our meal after this. What's our first meal going to be too. So that's going to be included next time. Yep. We'll see you guys next time.